Um, this summer, uh, if you were here a couple weeks ago, we were lucky enough to have George Washington come and visit. And we've discovered that people really enjoy meeting these historical figures uh, face to face. And since uh, Henry actually, Henry Longfellow actually lived here longer than George Washington did, we figured it was only fair that we would have him come and meet everybody as well, right? So uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our special guest today, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that's just so. Good day. I am Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Welcome to my home. Today I would like to recite selections from my extensive and exquisite body of work. I published the following in November of 1840. It is titled, The Village Blacksmith. Under a spreading chestnut tree, Under a spreading chestnut tree, <laughs> cute, cute bit. <clears throat> ah, very good. Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man is he, with large and sinewy hands. And the muscles on his brawny arms are as strong as iron bands. Week in, week out, from morn till night, you can hear his bellows blow. Chestnut tree, we're done with you. <clears throat> you can't get good health these days. Finnegan, uh, we'll take it from, uh, would you kiss your biceps over there? <laughs> What was that? Uh, all right, well, we'll pick it up from there. The smith, a mighty man is he, with large and sinewy hands. And the muscles on his brawny arms are as strong as iron bands. Week in, week out, from morn till night, you can hear his bellows blow. You can hear him swing his heavy sledge with meter beat and slow. Like a sexton ringing a village bell when the evening sun is low. And children coming home from school look in at the open door. They love to see his flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and catch the burning sparks that fly like chaff from a threshing floor. Gets me right here. <laughs> Wait, excuse me. Excuse what? Me. what? Excuse you indeed. What, huh, who, who, who dares interrupt the wordsmith Wadsworth, the Henry Wadsworth Longfellow? Well, may I? Thank you. That's the thing. Come on, you're not Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I most certainly am. All right. When were you born? What? Why, February 27th, 1807. Okay, but where were you born? Massachusetts. Ha-ha! Longfellow was born in Portland, Maine. Ah, but you see, my boy, in 1807, it was Portland, Massachusetts. Maine wasn't a state until 1820. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, so you got You're me there. But, um, all right, so what did you do for a living? Well, in addition to writing, I taught at Harvard University, you... Might have heard of it. Yeah, it's there. It's right there. Mm. All right, okay, so what did you teach? I was a professor of modern language. Hmm. Where, where did you live while you taught here? Well, I, at that time, I lived right here. I spent many a time sitting on this very porch, enjoying a lovely Sunday afternoon, much like we're doing here today. Right, folks? How are you doing? Oh, yeah. Weather was good to us. Beautiful day. 
Ah, I've had many like this, and I hope you continue to come and visit me and, and join. But I digress. Uh, All right. In those days, uh, I rented the property because I didn't own it yet. And I rented a room from the Widow Craigie. And not just any room. It was the very room in which stayed General George Washington, who came to Cambridge in July of 1775 to take command of the Continental Army in order to drive the occupying British forces out of Boston. Hmm? Is that right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so, um, all right. So many fa famous people came from Cambridge. Did you have any famous students? Oh, yes. I uh, taught a, a young gentleman by the name of Henry David Thoreau. You might have heard of him. Terrible braggart, that pompous fellow. Yeah, where did he learn that? <laughs> um, all right. So m maybe you don't know this one. Why Wadsworth? Why don't you? Why don't you just go by Henry Longfellow? You mean, why do I use Wadsworth? Yeah, why do, why do you go so by... I'm so glad you asked. Wadsworth was my mother's family name and a very proud lineage. Her father was General Wadsworth in the Continental Army. Her brother was Lieutenant Wadsworth, who gave his life in a naval battle in the Mediterranean during Jefferson's War against the Barbary Pirates. <laughs> Okay, all right, so you know a lot about Henry Wadsworth you Longfellow. You believe it, brother. All right, but, all right, that's a lot of information, but it's just... Hold on. Mm-hmm. Take your time. I well, can maybe there's something here that can help me. I hope there's nobody else like him in this audience. Actually, I hope I do. Is it... Any kids out there want to come help me out for a second? Anybody at all? Any kids? All right, come on up. Anybody? As many as, who wants to come up? Anybody? Oh, that's nice, hi kids. No. All right guys, come here, you gotta help me out. Cause this guy, all right, so, you see this? That's ah. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Mm-hmm, and a rather fetching image of me in my younger days. <laughs> okay, so, who can tell me the difference between this guy and that, that? Yeah. How about you? Can you tell the difference? He's great. <laughs> well, uh, I've been a little under the weather. <laughs> Preposterous. Okay, um, can you tell me something different? There is no traces of a mustache at all. Oh, well, I mean, I felt like shaving for all you nice people. I wanted to look my best. Please, please, I mean... How about you? Cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> green. He is green. Well, Let's see. I Wait. haven't been eating very well. He doesn't have blue hair. Well, I most certainly do have blue hair, see? Oh. No, she means this picture of the actual Henry Wadsworth. Oh, yes. Well, there must have been something lost in the colorization process. You I'm sure one? of it. His, one of his eyes is huge and the other one is tiny. It's the sun! I can't hardly see you! My goodness, anybody got any shades? They didn't have any in my time. Does that look like that guy? No. <laughs> he says no. Ah, well, that's it. You know what? You're so smart. You're so... That you... Oh, you upstart. You in my own home yet. I... Uh, uh, hey, Louie. Louie, break it down. Break it down. Finnegan. What? Wait, Finnegan. Where are you going? Where are you uh, going? Nah, you got the rest of the afternoon off, okay? This guy thinks he's going to run the show. No, right, no I don't want to do that. They, oh, they no, 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 I won't change my mind. I'm leaving. Uh, you're so smart, you take over. Good night. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, guys. I guess I'm on my own. All right, so you're, you're all here to... Thank you. Uh, so you're all here to learn about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Um, what do you know? Anyone? Who knows something about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow? You've got to help me out here. What do you know? Hold on a second. That he's not green. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Uh, who else? Do you know something about him? That he wrote the poem The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere. Absolutely. What would you know? All right. Anyone else? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, his best friend was United States Senator 
Charles Sumner. Okay, his best friend was United States Senator Charles Sumner? That's, that's great. All right, we're learning things. Um, all right, is there anyone else out there who knows anything? Yes, you. He did? He died in 1882? Wow, thank you for letting me know that. All right, who else? You know something, too. I watched a video today called The Midnight Ride of, Paul, of Me and Paul Revere, and the puppet and the, and the puppet was in it. Was it good? Was it a good video? Yeah, it was funny. Cool. Maybe everyone here should watch it as soon as they go home. That's a great idea. All right, so, all right, so is there anyone else out there who might know something about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow? Anybody at all? Not everyone all at once. Just someone help me. By the shores of Gitchigumi, by the shining big sea waters, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Now, is there anyone else out there? Um, uh, show of hands. That's all I need is a show of hands. Wait, I hear someone. I hear someone. Is, is this over here? B behind me? Miles! Oh. Hey, JT! Thank you. How are you doing? Thank you. Uh, how am I? Uh, well, I'm in a bit of a bind. What's the problem? All right, well, I ended up running this show, and ah. uh, I, I don't know, a, I know a lot about Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, but not everything. Can, can you give me some stuff? What could you help me with? Well, I, I came here because I'm studying uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow in school right now, and I thought I'd learn something because, uh, well, I have a test tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. What's and, the test uh, about? Well... It's on a poem called The Children's Hour that Longfellow published in September of 1860. The Children's Hour? That's uh -huh. my favorite poem by him. Oh, you know what? That's perfect. This might kill some time. Uh. So how about you read everybody the poem? Since you must know it because the test is tomorrow. So everyone, you want to hear the poem? Uh. All right, take it away. Um, see, uh, that's just the problem, JC. What's wrong? I, uh... I can't memorize it. Oh. oh. Oh, so you just need some help? Yeah. Okay, um, let's see here. Oh, these look like they might be able to help. Let's see here. So, all right, good. These are set up perfect. What you got right. there? Well, these are some cards that have the poem written on it. And what I want to do is I'm going to read you this poem but each line, I want you to say the last word. Do you think you can do it? Um, well, uh, yeah, I'll try. All right, great. So let's see here. This is the children's hour. Uh-huh. Between the dark and the... Um... Chocolate? <laughs> no, um, good guess, but no. Um, between the dark and the... What, what follows the dark? What's that? Morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's daylight. Between the dark and the daylight. Very good. Between the dark and the daylight, when the night is beginning to... Tumble. Not quite tumble, but it, something similar. When the night is beginning to... Um... Uh, you're, you're getting awfully low there, JT. Ah, lower. Lower, when the night is beginning to lower. Uh-huh. Comes a pause in the day's... Recreation? No, no close. Um, it kind of rhymes with that. It's a word that means jobs or responsibilities. Grown-up stuff. No, I, I'm just going to help you. Comes a pause in the day's... Uh, occupation. occupation. Oh, I remember that. It's occupation. Right, right, right. All right, now this one's easy. I know you have this. That is known as the children's museum. <laughs> no, it's, it's over the river. No, no. Uh, the name of the poem? The poem's called The Children's Hour. <laughs> yeah. Hour? Hour, The Children's Hour. That's great. All right, well, I mean, all right, well. Hour rhymes with lower? Uh. Well, Longfellow was a genius. We can let that one slide, right? Okay. I most certainly was. <laughs> All right, well, 
you know what? Not not bad for a first try. I mean, you got the first four lines, kind of. Well, but Casey, this poem is ten verses long. Yeah, that thought crossed my mind too. Yeah. What are we gonna oh, let's do? See. I don't know. Wait a minute. What is one of your favorite things to do? Well, I love to sing. Absolutely, you do love to sing. I've seen all of your videos. You're fantastic. Oh, fan. All right, so it's it's lucky because this is here. Oh, <laughs> and what's not that? only that, I happened to compose some music for this poem. And maybe if I play it for you, it'll help you remember. What? Um, how are we going to sing a poem? Well, the songs that you sing have these things called lyrics. Those are the words in the songs, and lyrics are a type of poetry. Oh. Yeah, you want me to show you? I guess we can try. All right. Between the dark and the daylight, when the night is beginning to lower, comes a pause in the day's occupations that is known as the children's hour. Hey, sounds great, JC. I hear in the chamber above me the patter of little feet, the sound of a door that is open and voices soft and sweet. From my study I see in the lamp light Ascending the broad hall stair Grave Alice and laughing Allegra And Edith with golden hair Can I try? Um, What's well, that? Uh, Don't be shy. Well, maybe you sing and I'll get the last word of each line. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. A whisper and then a silence. Yet I know by their merry eyes. They are plotting and planning together to take me by surprise. All right, you got it. You want me to sing a little more? Well, how about I'll sing it and you guess the last word. Okay, I'll guess the last word. That's a good idea. A sudden rush from the stairway A sudden raid from the hall By three doors left unguarded They enter my castle wall They climb up into my turret Over arms and back of my chair If I try to escape they surround me they seem to be everywhere They almost devour me with kisses Their arms about me entwined Till I think of the Bishop of Bingham In the Mouse Tower on the Rhine Do you think, old blue-eyed banditti Cause you have scaled the wall Such an old mustache as I am Is not a match for you all I have you fast in my fortress And will not let you depart But put you down into the dungeon In the round tower of my heart and there I will keep you forever, yes, forever and a day. Till the walls shall crumble to ruin and molder and dust away. And molder and dust away. Good job, Miles. Thank you. Thank you. Listen to them, Miles. They loved it. Wait, wait. What's wrong? Well, I guess I'll do okay on my test on Monday, but on Tuesday we have a test on war and peace. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for coming to the show.
Our puppeteers, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, Derek, who's here for Derek. Listen, I hope you really all enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to learn more about Bobville Pictures, um, there's a website right here you can look at. Also, we have postcards on one of the tables that you can check out. They're little posters for Midnight Ride of Paul Revere that we'd love you to see. Um, the puppets will be down in a minute if any of the kids want to talk with them or take pictures. So please come up and talk with us. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Thank you very Thank much. You everybody.